Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another video. Today I am developing that fourth roll of Film Ferrania P30 I had talked about. Um, I think this is going to be a mistake. As I mentioned in the last video, I'd already started shooting it before I developed the last one, and I thought my problem had been the way the roll was exposing. Now I know it's development, but I decided just to commit to the way I was shooting it, overexpose, and I'm going to develop it the same way to only change one factor, and then I will switch everything up for the next roll, which I'll talk about here in a minute. But I'm going to get to doing some of my chemical preparations. I should also tell you, make sure it's focused. Uh, I'm loving this new HC 110. It's the um, it's the new liquidy stuff, uh, as opposed to the old syrup. It's just so much easier to deal with. Um, I wonder if it keeps as long. That'll be interesting. But so far, with my using other films that I've used before, the results are exactly the same. So yeah, as I mentioned before, I have messed up all three rolls, and now I think I'm going to mess up a fourth roll of this alpha version of P30. Um, but I decided, you know, it might as well stay the course and only change one variable. I did pick up from Film Photography Project their um, FPP76, which is their version of Kodak's D76. That's what I'm going to develop the next roll in and try and shoot stuff a little less contrasty. Um, and hopefully that makes the difference to finally nail uh, P30, Ferrani's P30. But I was even watching the Film Photography Podcast today and they were talking about it. and. They were using a word to describe P30. They were saying it's heavy, and they had another term, but it is. I think it's just a film that needs to be handled meticulously, and it has a certain characteristic, and I just, I'm determined to nail it. I'm determined to get some good images. So I'm going to finish developing this roll the way it is, and then we'll go through and see what the images actually look like. Um. So since I didn't find any difference in using the um, dilution that was half as potent last time and doubling the development time between when I did use dilution B on the first couple rolls, I'm just going back to dilution B for time's sake since I know I'm going to have the same results. So I'm doing six minutes with five second agitations every 30. And again, I already know this kind of isn't the right process for this film, but I only wanted to change one factor this time, and we'll see what we get. So yeah, got the stop bath in here, developing is done, so I'm gonna finish up with the fixing and the long process of drying and all that, and I will talk to you upstairs at the computer when we see if anything turned out from this roll. It'll be, It'll be interesting. I'm not very hopeful. So yeah, I developed the negatives. I put them on the light table and right away I was like, oh, there is something totally different here. This worked out way better. So I was very hopeful. I got them scanned in and I have them now. So let's uh, jump into the roll again. Right off the bat, you could see like there is shadow detail here. This is out at the Station Road Bridge and it's still very contrasty and the highlights are, you know, pushing right up there to the edge of being blown, but it is much better. Here, look at this shot of Aaron again. There's actually mid-tones. Um, I just cannot believe that in my research, I haven't seen other people saying that this is a role of film you need to over, or a style of film you need to overexpose. Here again, you know, if I had the red filter on, I'd have a little more sky in there. This was a pretty bright midday shot though. Here's another shot of Aaron with the bikes, and again, you could see the trees, and if you look back in there, it's still a contrasty image, but it did push the whole, you know, spectrum. This is a sculpture my friend Mike did. This is actually why we wrote up here. I was doing digital photos of this for his portfolio. I did burn the sculpture in a little bit in Photoshop, so it was a lot closer to being blown than it is here, and you could see there still are blacks. Another shot of these cyclists, just 
much, much better. Uh, the bridges, this is the old Station Road Bridge and Iron Trust Bridge from the 1880s, I believe. And then you can see the new big one there in the background. And here's just that bridge. This is, I'm not shooting this in the best light. This is fairly bright midday sun and it came out pretty well. Another shot of the old bridge, with everyone, everyone out uh, walking. The parks were crazy this day we went for the ride. Uh, we stopped in Everett, what used to be Everett, took a couple more shots. Some of these, um, all these were exposed, overexposed by about one stop. I did do a couple, which I did not load into this folder, that were two stops. And those ones actually the highlights blew too much. They weren't usable. But between half and one and a half stops, I got really good results. On this one on the house, which is getting hit by pretty bright sun anyways, I did burn a little bit, but you could see the detail was there to be burned. Picture of an old barn. This used to actually be uh, Soleil's barn back in the day. And that's an orange barn in real life, reddish orange. You could really see and see the shadows coming across it from the trees and how good the trees look in the background. I mean, that is right there is an exposure I'd be going for with my Tri-X, you know, an HC-110. Uh, little garage thing. If I had shot this the way I had before, all you would see is the white of that garage and everything else would be black. Uh, this is another sculpture my friend Mike did. Um, this is in fairly bright light too. There's a mural in West Akron. Again, this is a great exposure. I'm really happy with this and that building is getting, you know, hit by the sun pretty hard too. So the fact that the highlights are going to white is not unexpected. Here's another one of that, you know, just a different angle. Pretty cool the bike and the bike mural. Uh, this was one, there was really good evening light. So this, I went out, I just walked down my street, state road here, really um, late day sun, golden hour. So I wanted to see what would happen with that. Again, I did overexpose a couple by two stops and they were too bright, but this is one stop over and it's just about perfect. I've been volunteering at the farmer's market and this is the opposite end of the spectrum where there was some good morning light. Not an ex This is not an exciting photo, but you know, it was more just to see what it would come out like, and it came out well. Um, now this is back to that other evening at Golden Hour. Golden Hour. This is a bar down the street, and I just everything's torn up from the wind, and the chairs are blown all over. And I'm sure there's no one going in to, you know, even take a look at it with the situation we have going on now. But again, great exposure. Hear more from the front. This wheelbarrow with the junk in it, I thought was just kind of cool. Yeah, a little substation pass there again, just doing this for kind of a lighting test because it was really, really good light. The Arthur Treachers. I think we have one of two or three left in the world of those strange fish restaurants. I just shot this directly into the sun just to see what kind of the look I got. And then this is, this last shot here is another one of Mike's sculptures. And this was probably four or five in the afternoon. So getting to a pretty decent point in light, but you know, that Akron, how it just came out really nice, the letters in Akron. and. I darkened this one in Photoshop a little bit, but nothing too crazy. The kind of contrast adjustments I would do to any roll of film I shot. So yeah, to sum it all up, I think I just, I'm just super surprised that I have not seen people recommending to overexpose this film a little bit. I'm just really curious and I really want to read more and see what other people's experience is. Maybe it's just that, maybe it's changed a little bit from alpha to the final version and you don't need to do that as much. I hope to find out eventually. But so since I do have that role left that I was talking about, I think what I'm going to do is overexpose it by a half to a full stop, but then switch to the um, D76 or I have FPP 76. I think it's the point is it's the exact same chemical um, and see what the results are there. I'm glad with this one I stuck it out the way I did because I got a totally usable, you know, totally usable images out of it. But also if I had changed the developer and changed the way I shot it, I wouldn't have known which one you know, had adjusted or, you know, well, in this case, bettered the images. So now it'll be interesting to see if just exposing a half to one and then developing it with a more recommended developer, what the effect that has. I'm guessing it's going to be slightly less contrasty, would be, which should be what happens. But yeah, I don't know. That's that. And I'm kind of, kind of excited. The second I put these on the light table, I mean, the difference was just, you know, glaring. Before, they, the negatives almost looked clear. I wasn't even sure there was anything on the first roll of Ferrania P30 I um, used. So, yeah, I will see you in the next video. That's all for now.